How's everyone going? Welcome back to another Coming to Night Night 8 Motorola unboxing video. Um, uh, I'm hoping I've got the uh, audio set correctly because unlike previous videos where I had an actual microphone, I'm not using one because, well, I'm, they're giving me hell in the edit. So, I'm going to try using the normal one but realigning the audio. So, let's hope that that works. If not, then, pff, well, I, I apologize. In any case, we've already got, you've already got the title. So, you know what the um, video is should be. So, yeah. Something kind of different. All right, so here we go. Um well, we've got something kind of different, you could say. Uh, it's definitely not Victorian. Uh, it's a, well, an Australian railway model C38 class, um, 3820. So it's the, um, uh, it's the unstreamlined model. It's the third C38 that they have brought out, uh, HO gauge, which is kind of odd because that's a zero. Um, H0 gate. I'm not sure which is correct, but I've always used the O, so at the letter O, um, but I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so I've got one of these today. It's some kind of something different to the fleet for obvious reasons. Uh, so, on the side, we've got 3820 um, C38 Class 462 Pacific Express Passenger Locomotive with the, uh, with the ARM logo. Uh, we've got a bit of brief history, um, for obvious reasons, you can pause the camera and have a read, I think, um, I should also have, a, uh, and I'll actually utilise the shot that you just saw there instead of utilising a, um, uh, other than you know, having a side shot because since I'll be doing pannings of it, but, uh, and the last little diagram, it's, uh, Trovo DC, uh, variable DCC ready, pretty sure it's an 8-pin it's decoder uh, socket as well, so, yeah. Um, so we'll get into the box, uh, after one moment. Alright, so about that jump car, I realised I had to do a few of the starting shots um, now, because once I take the engine out, it's not going to have an engine in, and with a see-through cover like this, uh, it's not, it doesn't look really good when you're doing your unbox um, shots with, um, nothing in it. because uh, I'm so used to the Australian stuff, and, well, a lot of the stuff now that usually has some form of artwork on the front instead. In any case, let's get her opened. Uh, I think I wasted enough time on the uh, opening. Um, it's flaps. It's uh, pretty hard to take out. Uh, be, uh, I might have to jump cut this because I might have to use a ruler. Alright, uh, just had to, just put, popped it open in the, with a um, ruler. That's really dodgily put in, but uh, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Let's pull her out. Nothing else in the box, we can set it aside. Uh, let's have a quick look at the instruction manuals. Of course, I'll be close up on the camera while I go through these. Um, C38 class, register running hints, love, and pretty much all the regular sort of stuff. Um, lifelong motor, which requires no maintenance. Sure. Um, they're very nice. Uh, these are actually pretty nice 3D renders of the model, not um, they're not actual drawings or anything. Uh, as uh, as you already realise, it's very um, Hornby-ish, um, as much as um, you might want to call it that. It um, it feels a lot like a Hornby sort of instruction manual. And to be really honest, it, there's probably a reason for that, and I may go through that in a minute. In any case, so what's the reason for why? I've chosen to purchase a C38 from ARM. So, for obvious reasons, it's not going to be able to operate with much of my fleet. It's um, it's definitely not a standard model for my fleet. It's um, being a, um, a New South Wales engine, uh, and I model Australian, uh, so, uh, Victorian, uh, so it just gets popped off. Uh, but, uh, the price tag of the model is uh, retails for three hundred dollars from ARM, it's, uh, Arm itself, uh, and so 
I have a few projects I would like to do with a few uh, with, uh, with with the J, um, which was covered in a, uh, one of our previous videos, uh, and. Because I want to do uh, work on that, I would like something to do a few test, uh, test, and, uh, test preparations too. And I decided that something maybe a bit cheaper, i.e. Um, something which is worth $300 instead of something that's worth $600 as is my little test bench in any case. So, let's pop her out. She's got her finger holes in the back. Oh goodness. Just drop the model would be nice. Um, <laughs> Pop it to the, the bottom there, and we'll get the. Here's one thing I should note, though you you can't see on the camera at the moment because I have it out of the frame. Uh, but the front bogey, the uh, front buffer is missing. It's actually here in the packaging. For some reason, no idea why it's here, but that's the buffer. So uh, again, plastic. Uh, this uh, these polystyrene packaging has. Striked again. What's kind of weird though, we compare this with like Hornby stuff um, in terms of packaging, but realistically, even Hornby has a new packaging like this in quite a number, quite a long time for no, their normal stuff, anyways. For something that's worth $300 from Hornby, they wouldn't be using this either. They use their um, the sort of plastic, um, uh, like basically every other manufacturer now. The only models they use this for is like their railroad stuff, if I recall. In any case, there we go, she's out of the box. Um, we can take a quick. Um, Pop up before I do a proper setup. There we go. That's there she is. Um, yeah, definitely something different. It's actually a pretty nice weight and it's oh. Um, so yeah, we'll get into the first impressions uh, after I refit the buffer. It shouldn't be too hard to refit the buffer. It looks like it just sits in the hole. So yeah. All right. Let's get close up. Alrighty. That took a little bit more fiddling than it should have. Ouch. Uh, but in any case, she's now set up on the rotating table. Uh, so yeah, let's take a take it for a quick spin. She's actually a pretty long locomotive as well. Uh, yeah, there we go. So what do I think? Well, she doesn't. The finish on it doesn't look bad. She does look pretty nice. Um, as I say, a few slight teething issues of the buffer fell off. That uh, headlight, um, I don't know if it's straight, uh, but it doesn't work anyway. So, um, mm. <laughs> so chances are, um, that's part of the project. Um, is uh, it? Uh, I will be attempting to get some headlights fitted into her. But uh, yep. Uh, let's have a look at the side on profile. That was messenger. Uh, let's have a look. So we've got our Pacific wheel arrangement of our four, um, six, two, uh, uh, so four, uh, four, uh, four main. Uh, what's it called? Four tri um, guiding wheels, um, six drivers, and uh, two uh, uh, supporting wheels, as known as pony jocks. In any case. Um, only thing we can immediately see is the current orientation, current orientation of the um, sh uh, linkage. Um, not 100% sure how correct that is, because it doesn't look 100% right. But um, and I'm pretty sure that is one of the components which isn't fully correct with this model as well. But ah uh, well. So let's spin around. I have got the uh, the trailer uh, trailer tender connected, uh, but it well it really isn't. Uh, it's not like um, the uh, J's and the D3s and even some of the uh, the new British stuff, which has an actual connector and stuff, which is uh, difficult to pull off. This is just um, the tender has no power, which is um, which makes life a bit easier for this. Uh, for the sake of things, that means I can literally come along and take the tender off, and we can have a look and see that there is actually in cab detail, which is really really nice as a first impression. So it's painted; it's only painted stuff, all molded, but, uh, but having even putting the effort into paint is pretty nice. So yeah, it's um, and yeah, so that's basically the side. Other thing we've noticed is the um, there's no whistle on the engine. The whistle is actually missing, so that's supposed to be in the next of the funnel uh, on this side of the engine, but it isn't there, so oh well. 
Ouch. I'm not going to knock the camera. And we're just going to quickly just drop the tender in front of the camera. Uh, pretty much same finish. Very nice. Got riveting all around it, which is really, really cool. For obvious reasons, people, depending on who already knows the model, uh, should quickly say that, yes, it does not have rotating bogies. Um, as we can see there, it is fixed. Um, so we'll see how that goes around the 18-inch corner on my layout. Um, and we've got a nice little ladder on the back. Um, uh, and a knuckle coupler, which actually is fitted into a NEM socket. So should, in practice, be able to handle uh, taking on a... Um, a normal tension lock, uh, like uh, all the other, uh, like Hornby and Backman and British stuff, and should technically be able to be changed out with a um, KD. Should be. The only thing is, is it doesn't have any uh, the um, normal. So if I quickly just zoom into the coupler, it doesn't have the sort of step up which like normal KDs. So there's a chance that if you put on a regular KD into it, you will actually sit higher than the regular uh, than uh, the standard. So well, uh, we'll uh, I'll have to take a look at that. Obviously, uh, no spung buffers. Um, so, uh, yeah, unlike the other two Aussies uh, models uh, that I've reviewed previously. Again, it's not really a fair comparison to compare with them. They are $600 models compared to this one being $300. Um, so, yeah, there we go. I think that's my first impression. It's just pretty nice. Looks nice. Paint, the paint is very crisp. Um, I don't really see that much wrong with the paint, uh, with the exception of the fact that the valve gear... The piston valve gear seems to be slightly incorrect in the fact that it's not straight. I don't know if that's correct for the 3038. It might, might be correct, but definitely the paint lining is matching the angle of the piston. And uh, if I recall, it should be horizontal with the um with the frame. In any case, let's quickly jump into some of her history um, uh, and some history of the C38 class. The C-38 class was a fleet of 30 express steam locomotives built for the New South Wales Government Railways between 1943 and 1949. The first five of the class were built by Clyde Engineering in Granville to a streamlined design. The last 25 were split between the two New South Wales workshops of Everly and Cardiff. Even number locomotives were sent to the former and odd numbers were sent to the ladder and were built without streamlined casings. These were the final and finest class of steam locomotives built for the New South Wales Government Railways. The engine utilised a standard express passenger 462 wheel arrangement, also commonly known as, the, as a Pacific type wheel arrangement, the only class of locomotive to do so in New South Wales. The initial five locomotives had entered service by 1945 during the middle of World War II and the Great Depression, and came in service in the in the nickname Grey Nurse Livery. After the war, the class were all repainted, either repainted or built painted, in the New South Wales Passenger Green Livery, until all of them, with the exception of 3813, were, re were shortly after repainted into the Black Livery during the 1950s. The C-38s operated until 1970, when they were replaced by the growing diesel locomotive fleet. Four of the class made into preservation, including three of the non-streamlined locomotives and class leader 3801. 3820 entered service in 1947 and was built at the Everly Railway Workshops. She was the last steam locomotive to haul a scheduled passenger service in Australia, which also made her the final C-38 to be in service that was withdrawn in 1970. After a few years in operation during preservation, she finally rested at the New South Wales Rail Museum as a static display. Alright, so let's uh, take a nice close look at um, some of her details and some of her features. Uh, not really features, but... Yeah, because I'm not going to be reading off a features list for this one. In any case... Uh, so we've got, the, obviously, the front of the engine. She's got... A nice headlight, which unfortunately doesn't work. She's got marker lights painted on. Um, the wheel dart is moulded on. She has got some nice, uh, the nice air compressor fitted to the front of the engine. Uh, and unlike 3806 and even 3803 uh, models, uh, it's painted in black or black include uh, with the uh, so that really looks nice. You got the numbers on the front, 3820. And uh, I'm pretty sure this 3820, this is, uh, 3820 does utilize this wording, numbering, so 
which is pretty good. Uh, something that uh, so there is no front coupler fitted to the model. However, you can fit one if I recall. The front coupler is a NEM socket. So, uh, in fact, I'll have a square shot of that on the screen of the socket itself. It looks like an NEM socket, so you should be able to slot in a NEM uh, couple of base into it. Let's quickly move up and spin around. Uh, as I say, you get your pistons, which honestly don't look. Un I'm not 100% sure if that's correct to have them at that sort of angle. But uh, you New South Wales guys can co confirm that. Um, uh, and I will go and have a look at some photos of stuff of, 30, of both 3801 and 3820 because I have seen the real engine, which is pretty nice. Um, in um, the, what was called Trainworks, now um, New South Wales Railway Museum. Uh, where she's currently stored statically, as you would have heard in the history. Uh, despite the linkage not being looking 100% correct, she does honestly still look pretty good. If most steam engines with linkage oh, will look pretty good, pretty nice, and it's always great to watch the linkage move around compared to the um, diesels. Uh, I have no idea what the thing is as, uh, that's on the side. It's called, I think it's something like a generator. Um, I think that's what it's called which utilizes the steam to convert it into a, uh, into a little turbine generator so they can power like the electronics and stuff like headlights and stuff. I'm pretty sure that was what it is. Uh, I can't fully remember though. <laughs> I do apologize. Um, you get your pony truck at the back. The pony truck, unlike uh, most Pacifics by Hornby and even Backman, does swivel, which is really nice. So which is kind of odd knowing that swivels, but the tender bogey wheels don't. Nice little cab on, uh, cab numbers on the side. Paint is nice and crisp all the way straight through, and um, you've got your coat of arms on the side of the cab. Should we zoom in? Assuming that the hammer doesn't go out of focus before it hits it, that's very good of it to do that like so. Um, if we can, I might get a photo of that up on the screen. Yeah, got a nice little bit of pi uh, pipe work for the injectors underneath the arm um, engine. You got your safety valves on the roof. Um, and yeah, so looks pretty correct uh, besides the few missing components and the slight incorrectness in terms of the that, but uh, and slightly oversized stuff. But onto the tender again, you got your nice rivets, uh, you got nail bogies which don't rotate as you can easily tell. But uh, we'll, as I say, we'll see how they run. If not, then we will be acquiring one of those um, uh. Basin uh, uh, tender set of uh, bogey sets just because I kind of wanted to run on the layout. <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons, I don't have any carriages for this, so she will be running with some Victorian Railway Z carriages. Um, eventually, maybe I might get uh, get some carriages for it if I look into getting any more of the um, um, C38s, the more test models. Uh, but yeah. Again, so you got your two tail lights on the back. You got your ladder. Your ladder's a little bit thick, which is uh, kind of interesting because the um, the ones are pretty thin. But I don't know if that was only 3801, which had the thinner ladder or something. You got your coat of arms on the back of um, on the uh, on the center of the tent uh, as well. And let's spin around again. You got a little bit of redness on the side of the bogey uh, on the side of the uh, tender, which is a little bit eye shocking, honestly. A little bit striking. Let's continue onwards. Basically, looks the same on this side, with the uh, exception of the little turbine. Um, and you got your nice, separately fitted handrails going straight down the side of the model. And unlike C30, uh, C3806, they are actually painted black. And we're back at the front of the model um, in a war prime. So she doesn't honestly look too bad. There are obviously things that can be done, and that that is the best thing about this model. Is she is a um. Because she's not too expensive, um, I say not too expensive, so three hundred dollars which is actually pretty expensive in most people's budgets, especially if in terms of um, if you compare us to British models. Um, however, um, compared to our current Australian model lineup, um, it really is um, quite a difference in price and it does allow us a few more opportunities to play around, to have some more of a, like a test subject in terms of or if you want to do weathering, or in terms of want to play around with seeing how you go with fitting lights or stuff like that. So, it, or even if you want to go and repaint it up or something like that, or renumber it. Uh, it's a really something which is more friendly to the budget, even though it's not a hundred percent friendly to the budget sort of thing. In any case, um, 
I might go and grab my uh, grab the J so we can just have a little bit of a side on side comparison to something which is worth uh, double the price and what and the difference all the differences you can th look out for for um, when something is worth double the price um, because uh, this is one of the it's currently the only more uh, currently one of the few Australian models you can get at this price point of three hundred dollars so uh, and let's go and quickly bring the J in. Alrighty, here we are. We've got J549 seen in the previous review, uh, not the previous. So you can see side by side the sort of a slight, uh, the sort of, sort of quality difference between something which is basically double the price to um what it is. Uh, the J has a has a white metal uh, white metal um uh, body, um, unlike the um C38 which is a plastic body, and even. To the uh, the amount. I'm pretty to the extent, I'm pretty sure the frame is also body, uh, plastic, so yeah, you can really see the sort of differences you're uh, you are paying for uh, when it comes to paying double the price. Uh, because realistically, comparing it, should, uh, uh, comparing the C38, we should be comparing it to something more like um, uh, one of our diesels, because being in uh, in the part, basically our price range of being as part of the diesels. But yeah, so that's just a little quick little look um, between the uh, between uh, a um, well, basically something that's worth double the price. In any case, uh, let's jump over to the layout and um, well, give her a run.